yeah so uh, the video is also live now on uh, uh, youtube uh, so we okay. welcome you all uh, to this session today uh, is yet another uh, session on talent talks we been doing these sessions for almost like this 30 35 days and we hosted 45 photographers so far uh, this session is very interesting very important because we have a very interesting personality uh, who's uh, from belvai this village called belvai in coastal karnataka uh, uh, welcome uh, samilan uh, for the call so Thank you. i have one small uh, request all of these participants who are on the call please put your audio in uh, mute otherwise i i am going to put all of you in mute in case if you have any questions if you have to um, uh, you know ask something to samilan will unmute you you can raise your hands will be able to unmute you then you can ask your questions any case in the chat window you can type your questions in considering uh, the uh, bandwidth we are also keeping all the videos also in mute whenever you wanted to speak then we'll unmute you in, in uh, specific to video also and then you can ask questions right so what we're going to do is uh, talam talks i'll just quickly introduce talam talks we'll have a small video to play i'll play the talam talk introduction video then um, then we'll introduce the speaker for today one second i'm just going to play talam video Um, uh, was the art gallery based in Bangalore, and uh, we've been hosting a lot of uh, exhibitions, talk events, art shows uh, for so many years now, almost seven years now. Uh, so that's a small introduction about uh, Talam. So let's quickly introduce uh, the speaker for today, Samilan Shetty. Uh, Samilan Shetty is a conservationist and uh, founder of Butterfly Park in Belvai, uh, which is in Karnataka, the coastal Karnataka. Uh, he's also the maker of the film Life of Butterflies, which is. Uh, India's first comprehensive documentary on butterflies. Uh, being born and brought up in a village, uh, the natural instinct to conserve wildlife and nature has influenced him a lot in his life. Uh, his special interest uh, for for butterflies uh, grew when he was allotted a project on study of local butterflies by his uh, zoology teacher, uh, Professor uh, Doctor Ashok C H, during his graduation days at uh, Alva Alva's College in Murubidri. Uh, the butterfly park in belvai was founded in the year 2011 with the aim of conserving the butterfly fauna of western ghats also creates awareness among general public and students uh, which making them understand the importance of butterflies in nature his film this 100 minutes film uh, named as life of butterflies it was released last season all the footage completely shot uh, uh, in the butterfly park for over 4 years by him Uh, so he was featured in amazing indians season 3 by times of india as an exceptional eco warrior in 2013 for his work on butterfly conservation the butterfly park at belvai was also honored by world book of records london uk 
in 2018 for hosting awareness programs and conservation activities. This year, he was awarded the Public Choice Award uh, by Deccan Herald at the Deccan Herald Changemakers 2020 event. So welcome on board, uh, Samilin. Thank so you. over to you. Uh, you can introduce yourself and then uh, then before before presenting your uh, screen. Yeah. You already given an introduction about me. Uh, um, so uh, uh, today, actually, uh, I'm going to talk about the, about the basics of the butterflies. I have not included uh, much, uh, much video in, the, uh, in this uh, talk because uh, um, we have little problem with the internet also. So considering that, I have put more photos and I'm going to explain you the basics of butterflies. And definitely, I'm sure that uh, your way of looking butterflies would change after this uh, small talk. Uh, let me just uh, share the screen for you. I hope you can see the screen, Life of Butterflies. Yes, we could see. So the butterfly here is a uh, gaudy baron. Uh, 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 you can see in this photo. I'm going to talk more about this butterfly and others. So butterflies uh, uh, and moths, they belong to the order Lepidoptera. Uh, Lepidoptera are uh, those, uh, are those insects which uh, have got scales on their wings. Uh, both butterflies and moths have scales on their wings. So that's why they belong to this order. Uh, so let me just tell you the differences uh, between the butterflies and moths. So normally that get attracted to light at your home. Majority of them are normally moths. So, so usually confuse whether it is a butterfly or a moth. So let me just uh, tell some of the differences to you. Moths are usually nocturnal. Uh, they're active during the night, whereas butterflies are diurnal in nature. They're active during the daytime. Moths keep their wings flat against the body, whereas the butterfly wings are held vertically during rest. So if you see any moth, normally, uh, whether it is in rest or uh, it is active, they normally keep their wings flat. Whereas, but, and there might be some exceptional cases. There are some uh, like also which keeps the, keep, keep their wings flat against the body. Moths have a pointed and feathery antenna, whereas butterfly antenna are club-shaped. Let me just show you a moth. So let us see the differences, uh, what we learned. Look at the antenna here. The antenna is, I hope you can see the moth. Yeah, we could see. Yeah. So the, the moth antenna is pointed uh, and uh, some of the moths have fine feathers on their antenna. And as you can see also in the photo, the wings are flat against the body. And this uh, was taken at night. This picture was taken at night. Normally, moths are active during night. This uh, picture was taken in the daytime, and it is a butterfly. And if you look at the antenna of the butterfly, you can see the swollen part. It is swollen at the tip. It is club shaped. So this is uh, one difference. Then uh, the wing difference. But now here in this case, you are seeing the wings are flat. But if you saw the gaudy baron photo, which I showed you first, that was vertically folded. That was during rest. So during rest, the wings are vertically folded. So look at the wing of this butterfly, autumn leaf. Uh, you can see the wings vertically folded during rest. Here you can see the caterpillars. Um, this, these caterpillars are even butterfly caterpillar. Moth caterpillar. Uh, usually, the, okay, you can see the hairs, and this, you know, the caterpillar falls on you. Uh, you might get a skin irritation sometimes. Uh, whereas butterfly caterpillars are totally harmless, and most of them don't have hairs. Uh, uh, there's a caterpillar, a butterfly called southern duffer, and if you look at the caterpillar of southern duffer, it looks like a moth caterpillar, but usually not. Look at this, these caterpillars of the Malabar banded solitaire. Malabar banded solitaire is a butterfly which is endemic to Western Ghats. And uh, they lay eggs um, 
uh, one upon the other and usually the caterpillars uh, will be in groups uh, feeding and pupating together and also closing together let us learn more about the life cycle of the butterfly the first stage is the egg the second is the caterpillar, third is the pupa, and the final stage is the adult. So there are four different stages in the life cycle of the butterfly. And you should be also uh, knowing that every butterfly has got its own host plant. Uh, I will include some of the, I will just mention some of the host plants, uh, which you are familiar with. I hope you are all familiar with the lemon tree, um, yeah, lime plant, or, or you are familiar with this curry leaf, uh, even the mango tree. A curry leaf is host plant for two species of butterflies, the common mormon and a lime solotail. If you take mango tree, it is host plant for up to four species of butterflies. Again, uh, citrus, that is a, a lime plant, is host plant for blue mormon uh, and even uh, common mormon, uh, the lime solotail. So, these, uh, even the lime blue will breed on this particular uh, plant. So, butterflies are so specific, they are so strict that if you remove the caterpillar from the host and place it in some other area, it's a death sentence. So, uh, because they cannot feed on any other plant. So, let me uh, just show you some life cycle photos of different species of butterflies from the Western Ghats. Uh, you can see here the eggs of the cruiser. These are the eggs. One, two, three, four. And the cruiser feeds, the caterpillar of the cruiser feeds on a climber called Edenia hundala. Uh, in Tulu, we call it as Irol Gadde. So that is host plant for this butterfly. And you can see the caterpillars also in the next photo. These are the tiny caterpillars. Uh, this is a fully grown caterpillar, the final insta caterpillar after feeding on the host. Then it hangs like this uh, upside down and then it becomes a pupa. And from the pupa, the butterfly emerges out. So there are four stages in the life cycle of the butterfly. Here you can see the Malabar banded solotail uh, life cycle, the eggs laid one upon the other, forming a unique structure. So, uh, there are up to about 11 eggs, I think, on this. And, you know, the first uh, caterpillar might come um, from uh, this base, uh, first egg also. We have documented the caterpillar moving out of this egg first, and then the rest of them will follow soon. And you can see they all remain together. And this is the uh, pre-pupal stage, and this is the pupa of the Malabar banded solotail and the butterfly which has freshly eclosed. There are some more uh, videos, uh, sorry, uh, photos of the butterfly life cycle. You know, some butterflies, you know, they lay eggs singly. You can see in this, it is a single egg. If, but if you saw the previous photos, the egg were, uh, you know, four to five numbers of the cruiser. There might be more also. They lay it in batches. And this uh, Malabar banded solotail is eggs one upon the other. You can see one more egg here, uh, which is singly laid. In Tamil lacing, the eggs are laid in batches. You can see the eggs here and the caterpillar, the, uh, the half-grown caterpillar and the fully-grown caterpillar is here of the Tamil lacing. And uh, you can see the butterfly which just come out of the pupa after that. There's a plum judy here, the life cycle of the plum judy. The eggs are laid singly like this, as you can see. So here is the clip uh, life cycle. Uh, you can see the egg here and the caterpillar and the pupa. Uh, here, this is the pupa and the freshly enclosed clipper. So let me just highlight on the importance of butterflies in nature. Why do we need butterflies? Uh, first and foremost thing is that they form a part of the food web. They become food for predators like birds, praying mantis, robber flies, dragonflies, frogs, lizards. So there are many predators which are dependent on the butterflies for their survival. So they, this is a, one importance. Second is pollination. Of course, the bees are the major pollinators, but butterflies also play a very important role. There might be some trees and plants which has to be solely pollinated by butterflies. So in that uh, way, butterflies are very important in pollination also. They act as ecological indicators. They indicate how rich is our ecological system? So if you have good butterflies in your area, say for example, uh, cruiser, what you saw. So that means you have uh, Edenia and Ohondala in the area. Um, the floral diversity is rich. So that's an indication. Uh, by looking at the butterflies, you can tell the floral diversity of the area also. Let me just uh, talk about the threats. Why we have seen a decline in the butterfly population 
uh, in the uh, recent years. Of course, we don't know the amount of decline. Let us just uh, uh, know this, that habitat destruction is a major threat for not only butterflies, but the entire wildlife population. Uh, application of pesticides is another threat which can destroy or kill the caterpillars, eggs, and also the pupa or the adult. Forest fire uh, can wipe out the butterfly population in an area. So these are a few of the threats for the butterflies. So what you can do in order to conserve butterflies is, uh, first and foremost, you will have to protect the forest in your surroundings. Uh, the butterflies normally thrive in natural habitats uh, on native plants. They breed on uh, host uh, plants which are native to the area. So when you propagate more native plants, uh, when you propagate more nectar and host plants, butterfly population will sustain, not only the butterfly population, but the entire wildlife, local wildlife population will sustain. So protecting your natural habitat, protecting your for, protect, protecting the forest in your surroundings is very much important to see a good butterfly population. Let me just highlight on the a few things on the butterfly park also. It was started in the year 2011 and it is situated in a village called Belvai in uh, Dakshina Kannada district of Karnataka and the total area what we have dedicated uh, for the uh, conservation for creating this conservation model is 7.35 acres and uh, it's just the natural habitat for butterflies and also other wildlife forms no dome or enclosure is maintained uh, propagation of more native plants is been happening is still been happening uh, the park is uh, run with a service motive and is not a commercial undertaking uh, still date, we have recorded more than 150 species of butterflies out of about 300 plus species of butterflies found in the Western Ghats. So this is a map here, you can see of the Dakshina Kannada district and this is the butterfly park map. Here's the aerial view of the area of the butterfly park. Uh, this is my house, this one. And uh, here you can see there's a, a, a kind of a seminar hall where we give talks before we take them in the field for walk where you'll be spotting butterflies in the natural habitat. And uh, there is a, a little coconut plantation you can see. And this is not our area. Uh, this, this, this is the border actually. And you can see the uh, you know uh, other areca plantations, uh, kind of a disturbed habitat. There, is, there are paddy fields also. But there are a lot of secondary forest also, which has been untouched. So these secondary forest, what you're seeing, uh, is engulfed with trees called Hopia Ponga. And um, this Hopia Ponga species of Ponga in this in these forests. And this uh, so this is the aerial view of the butterfly park. Let us move to the next slide. I'm playing a video. I don't know how much effective it will be uh, while playing a video because there was a slow internet connection. Uh, let me just test it. Uh, let us see it now. I hope it is playing. I hope the video is playing. Yeah, it is a little jerking, but uh, yeah, it is playing, but yeah, there's little movement. Okay. Slowly jerking and yeah. This was the video of the secondary forest. This is the video of the secondary forest, what we have, uh, which is, I uh, told uh, is engulfed with Hopia Ponga trees. Let us move on to the next video now. So the rain usually does the magic. As the pre-monsoon uh, showers start falling, there's a trigger in the butterfly activity. Normally the season will start in the month of June, which will go up till the uh, month of November. And August and September usually the peak months. So the coast receives the heaviest rainfall within even 5 mm uh, uh, per year. And you can uh, see here's normally in June, uh, along with the monsoon showers, uh, also before the uh, uh, before the monsoon, that is the pre-monsoon showers also, uh, you know, gives birth to some activity uh, at the butt of the Western Ghats, and it should go till the month of November. So 
So all these videos uh, are what I'm seeing are exclusively taken from the particular uh, uh, here. And you can see also the uh, aggregation of the milkweed butterflies. Uh, they come here for alkaloid sucking. This is a slow motion capture. Uh, alkaloid sucking, uh, uh, you know, you butterf male milkweed butterflies need alkaloid, which would basically help in a better reproductive success. And the butterflies uh, are involved in alkaloid sucking from this uh, plant called Crotillaria. You can see uh, one more video here of the close-up video where the alkaloid sucking of the male milkweed butterflies is visible. Um, let us move on to the next video. So this is the activity for the July. The loss of new plants which have come a lot of butterfly activity can be seen. So what do butterflies feed on? So what do butterflies feed on? They feed on variety of food stuff. You might, uh, have, you might have thought that butterflies only feed upon nectar in the flask, but they feed on variety of food stuff. They come on bird droppings, they get on, they come on million droppings, human sweat also attracts butterflies. Wet soil patch can bring butterflies. Uh, wet soil patches because uh, they need salts and minerals. That's the reason why they come on wet soil patches. Here's the dark blue tiger, which is nectaring on Premna species. It is sipping nectar from this flower. So here you can see the crimson rose butterfly on a statue peta. I hope you can see that. Uh, there's a crimson rose, that's a slow motion capture. You can see it sipping nectar from the statue peta flash. So they feed on nectar. And there's one more uh, video of the Malabar banded peacock uh, feeding on statue peta uh, metabolis. So this is the Malabar banded peacock on uh, Lantina. So Lantina is normally uh, considered as an invasive species. Uh, but we have gone for an ornamental lantern which doesn't uh, you know yield seeds and there is uh, no way it can propagate uh, without uh, you know human intervention so for that reason to be on safer side we have gone with this lantern normally wild lanterns are very invasive uh, but still they're not that invasive in the butterfly park what we have observed uh, more than that there are other invasive plants also the flask plaza and all which are more invasive than the lantina lantana. And here you can see the tailed jay, one of the fastest flying butterflies in India. That's a slow motion capture of the tailed jay. Uh, this is one uh, LSU butterfly, the blue nabab. Uh, it was first recorded in the year 2013 when the park was inaugurated at the butterfly park. The second record is in the year 2015 of this beautiful butterfly. There is no record of this butterfly after that. Here the butterfly is sipping liquid from rotten jackfruit. So they come on rotten fruits also. So here there's a gaudy baron sipping liquid from rotten fruits again. There are two gaudy barons. So this is a close-up of the gaudy baron sipping liquid from rotten fruit. You can see the proboscis of the butterfly. The proboscis is very porous in nature, has a capability to suck. And uh, all butterflies have this proboscis in order to sip the liquid. Butterflies also get attracted to bird dropping. You can see the bird dropping here. And the butterfly here is the banded blue piero, which comes and sits on the bird dropping, uh, mostly because it, is, uh, it requires sodium. That's why you can see butterflies on bird dropping also. Here you are seeing mud pudding of butterflies. I hope the mud pudding photo is there for, uh, visible to you. Uh, there are uh, you can see a lot of uh, albatross uh, butterflies here. Mud pudding. There's a common chair. There's a common dew bottle, which are all mud pudding here on the soil patch. So this is a kind of social activity where hundreds of butterflies gather near the river banks to suck salts and minerals from the wet soil patches. 
Uh, most of them are the males which are involved in, uh, involved in this uh, mud puddling behavior. But the reports of the female also mud puddling. If you look at the next uh, slide, slide. So here is a close up of the mud puddling butterflies. Here's a common blue bottle, which is mud puddling. Uh, this is a video. You can see the progos is touching the ground. It takes liquid and it keeps on excreting the uh, excess liquid. You can see the close-up of the uh, excretion here of the uh, common chain. You can see the close-up of the excretion. It's a kind of hypermetabolism, uh, what is uh, seen in butterflies when they mud puddle. They take the liquid and keep on excreting it. Let us come to the courtship uh, behavior of the butterflies. So uh, the, these are the photos of the common mormon uh, courtship. I can see the form Romulus female here. And there's a male uh, which is continuously displaying to impress her. Uh, here uh, you can see them in flights. Uh, this, was, this photo was taken uh, at about uh, you know, uh, more than uh, uh, 2,000 shutter speed, and it has been freezed in the air. And you can see this crimson, uh, sorry, uh, this butterfly, the, the form Romulus of the common mormon, it mimics a butterfly called crimson rose, a kind of a defense mechanism what it uses. Uh, here you can see the display of the uh, male. And if you look at the next video, you can see the courtship display of the tailed chick. The female is sitting and she's watching the show. The female is sitting and watching the show. The male is uh, doing his best and uh, trying to impress her. Uh, you can also see him uh, sometimes doing reverse acrobatic flips to impress the female during the courtship ritual. Here's a, a group of uh, common Jezebel butterflies. There's a female sitting and there are four males displaying and trying to impress her. She's raising her abdomen, a kind of a, a matrifusal posture, kind of a rejection behavior. And uh, the males continuously follow her wherever she goes. The courtship display, uh, display might end with mating, not necessarily. Uh, very often, uh, the female uh, rejects uh, the advances of the male. Uh, here you can see the mating photos of the striped tiger. And this is a male striped tiger, this is a female. You can see the scent pouch of the male, uh, whereas females, uh, they don't have the scent pouch. This is a monkey puzzle, mating of the monkey puzzle uh, butterflies. They belong to the uh, uh, Lycinidae family of butterflies. Let us see the egg laying of the butterfly. Here is a common rose butterfly. As you can see, uh, it uh, touches the plant before any butterfly, you know, it lays eggs. Uh, it just visualizes the plant uh, and it looks the shape of the leaves. And also after that, uh, then um, it gets close. To, uh, it gets close to the plant, and then it touches the plant. And the, uh, this uh, legs, uh, you know, uh, actually uh, punctures the leaf surface, and an aroma is released. And the female confirms whether it is a host or not. So uh, once it is confirmed, the female will lay her egg on the host, and she will just you can see, uh, you know, trying to rub the surface of the plant. The surface of the leaf, in fact. So once a female lays her eggs, her job is over. There is no parental care observed in butterflies. Uh, the female will just leave the area. You can see here the common immigrant laying eggs on Senna alata. There's a single egg laid by the female. Going on to the next video. Uh, here's a photo of the Malabar banded solotail butterfly, which is endemic to Western Ghats. Uh, and you can see it laying egg uh, one upon the uh, other. Uh, forming that unique structure. Okay, and this plant is Citrus medica, a newly reported host uh, for this butterfly, the Malabar Bennett Solotail. Here's an egg of the southern birdwing. Uh, the southern birdwing is the state butterfly of Karnataka and the largest of all the Indian butterflies is the first stage, the egg. These are the caterpillars of the autumn leaf. The first meal of the caterpillar is uh, the eggshell. It, it comes out of the egg by feeding on its own eggshell, creating space for itself. Once it completely comes out, it will turn back and 
start feeding on the eggshell. The, uh, they feed on the eggshell for two reasons. One reason is the eggshell is nutritious. Second, uh, if it is left like that, it will be easy for the parasitic vas, uh, you know, to just uh, to grab that and, you know, in order to avoid uh, this, these parasitic vas, they might clear the evidence. The caterpillar will feed on them and they will finish off the eggshell. So uh, then after that, uh, they will start feeding on the tender parts of the host. And then when the once the mouth parts are mature, they start feeding on the um, mouth parts are strong. They feed, start feeding on the mature leaf also. Here's a caterpillar of the southern birdie uh, feeding on the eggshell. And I told you the first foot of the caterpillar. You get this tiny caterpillar, which is just come out of the egg. It is feeding on its own eggshell. Here's a fully grown caterpillar of the southern birdie. It is searching a high dot for preparation. It has to go to the next stage. So once it settles down, it will start doing the silk thread. Uh, and uh, you know it um, forms a pre pupa and then it becomes a uh, pupa. You can see this is a, a pre stage of the southern birding. You get threads, uh, the silk uh, threads, which is done by the caterpillar. And you can see the silk thread where it is hanging. The silk pad is done to support itself at the posterior end. At the anterior end, this silk thread will support the caterpillar. So this is the case again of the southern uh, uh, night and uh, on the evening screen and uh, what was the butterfly. So um, here is the butterfly coming out of the pupa. You can see the, in the previous the previous slide we couldn't hear anything. Uh, the oh, video, it? it's okay, you don't have to go there, but just say what you said. Yeah, so this is a video of the pupa of the southern bird wing. When you play the video, we can't hear you. That specifically. Uh... Now we are able to hear, right? Now you are able to hear. Yes, yes, yes. So that that video uh, was of the pupa of the southern bird wing, and uh, it was uh, taken at night uh, on the uh, in that evening it rained and you can see the also the water droplets on the uh, pupa. The southern bird wing would normally take after it has formed the pupa it would normally take a month for the butterfly to come out of the pupa. So, but uh, you know the conditions are not favorable if the uh, it is dry outside, uh, the butterflies uh, normally remain dormant. Uh, and they uh, might come out after about two to three months of the of after pupation also. Moving to the next slide. This is a freshly eclosed southern bird wing male. You can see the southern bird wing male freshly eclosed. This is the empty pupil case, what you can see now uh, from where the butterfly has come out. It has, the wings are also uh, unfolded completely. Uh, normally, the wings remain folded when it is inside the when this, uh, when the development takes place and the butterfly is coming out. The wings are folded. Uh, it unfolds after it comes out. You can see the abdominal region of the southern bird wing. This is a proboscis with the butterfly is in order to sip in liquid, uh, sip the liquid. The proboscis remains folded like this when it is not in use. This is the antenna of the butterfly, the southern bird wing, and you can see the club shape at the. Uh, tip here, it is club shape. The it is uh, swollen at the tip here. Moving on to the next slide, this is the meconium liquid where uh, which the butterfly uh, puts out before it takes the flight after coming out of the pupa. The butterfly is in flight. Uh, the southern birding, as I mentioned, uh, the state butterfly of Karnataka. This is a male southern birding. Look at the female here. They exhibit sexual dimorphism. The male and female have different wing patterns. You can see this male doesn't have an extra of black spots, whereas the female have this extra of black spots on their hind wing. Southern bird wing uh, is a state butterfly of Karnataka, which was officially declared uh, in 2017. In 2015, uh, 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 we had put a proposal uh, uh, in my interview with Bangalore Mirror. I had mentioned about uh, the state butterfly. And um, uh, it's, uh, she's Sanjay Mohan, the then additional principal chief conservator of forests. 
uh, he wrote to the chief wildlife warden. He is now heading the forest uh, force uh, of the Karnataka state. So um, after that, it was uh, officially declared as a state butterfly of Karnataka. The southern bird wing is the largest of all the Indian butterflies, and also it is endemic to South India. And it breeds on a climber called Aristolochia indica. In Canada, we call it as Ishwara belli. Uh, in Tulu, it is called as Isara bear. The climber is toxic. It is toxic because it comes out of aristologic acids. And the caterpillars which feed on this uh, cli toxic climber, they also have become toxic and they're normally not preferred by birds. Uh, that's kind of defense mechanism what they use. Even the butterfly is toxic, it's unpalatable, normally not eaten up by uh, predators. Uh, but there are, there are some unusual uh, reports where the predators have eaten the southern bird wing. Life of Butterflies is a first ever uh, comprehensive documentary on butterflies in, uh, and uh, it was shot exclusively from the butterfly park. It is a hundred minutes film shot in a span of four years. And uh, this butterfly, uh, you know, this butterfly documentary uh, tells a lot, many new things and one which is first ever recorded behavior in the world, that is the southern birding female shooting the X in the air. That is the first ever recorded behavior of a female shooting the X in the air on the host plant. Let me just show you some photos taken from most, most of them from the butterfly park and uh, a few uh, from uh, outside the park also in the poor Western Ghats region. Uh, I'll first into the solitaire family. This is a Malabar banded peacock. It is a it is a iconic butterfly, uh, I can say, and uh, uh, it, it was rated as the third most beautiful butterfly uh, uh, in India by Winter Blit. He rated this as the third most beautiful. It was his uh, personal choice. Uh, the butterfly is distributed in. Uh, it is endemic to Western Ghats. And uh, this butterfly is very common in the coastal line of the Western Ghats. It used metallic colors, depending on the angle where you see the butterfly or the time of the day, anything from metallic green to metallic blue. It breeds on a huge tree called Xanthoselum retsa. In Tulu, we call it as Kavatekai or Petnolikai. It is the host plant for the Malabar banded peacock. And um, if this plant is remote from uh, habitat, the Malabar banded peacock go uh, locally extinct in that area if that particular tree is remote. So presence of a lot of Malabar banded peacock is an indication that it's a lot of Xanthoselum retsa. There's a Paris peacock butterfly here. The Paris peacock was it as the second most beautiful. Uh, this is uh, common uh, when you go uh, towards the core uh, Western Ghats, even though it is not that common in the coastal line of the Western Ghats. Uh, Malabar banded peacock is more common in the coastal line of the Western Ghats. This is also a very beautiful species. Here is one more uh, beautiful butterfly, the Pibar Sawtail, and uh, they are found in very good numbers in the entire uh, Western Ghats stretch, especially in some of the hot spots like the Someshara Wildlife Sanctuary. You see, during the puddling season, a lot of Pibar Sawtails, and uh, they they just disappear in monsoon. You normally see them uh, after. Uh, uh, October uh, and October November, and then you'll see them till uh, March April. Their numbers uh, April May also. Their numbers will be peak usually in the month of March. Uh, okay. So then you have the blue mormon. This is the state butterfly of Maharashtra. It is also a huge butterfly uh, next to the Malabar tree nymph in the Western Ghats. Can be called as the uh, third um, largest butterfly in Western Ghats. The first being the southern birdie. The second, the Malabar tree nymph, as far as the wingspan is concerned. The Malabar tree nymph is a butterfly which is endemic to Western Ghats again. And so the blue marmon is the third largest butterfly in the Western Ghats. Here you can see the common blue bottle, mud puddling. This, uh, you know, the proboscis is touching the ground. I also already explained to you the mud puddling behavior. Moving on to the skippers. Here's the orange olet uh, taken from the butterfly park. This is the first record for Dakshina Kannada district. And this butterfly is very beautiful and breeds on a uh, plant uh, a plant called a hip, a hip bengalensis. Uh, it's a wonderful nectar plant uh, for this particular butterfly. There's a darklet here. And the next one is a bush hopper.
is a common grass start. These all belong to the uh, Hesperidae family of butterfly. This is a moose ace. The butterfly lesser girl. Look at this butterfly. It belongs to the Lycinidae family of butterflies. Uh, majority of the Lycinidae butterflies have uh, upper side blue. Uh, when they open the wings, you can see the bluish tinge on the upper side. As males are more attractive than the females. And you can see here, uh, if you look at the hind wing of this banded blue pierre, there's a black tonal spot and tail like projection, which gives an appearance of a head and an antenna. The real head is here, the real antenna is here. This is to deceive predators. Instead of attacking on the front end, the predator might attack this butterfly on the rear end. The wings might be gone, but the butterfly gets the life. So, in order to grab the attention of any predator, the butterfly keeps on moving its hind wing uh, so that it will attack on the hind wing only. The butterfly here is dark pierre. This uh, image was taken at Somesha Wildlife Sanctuary. It is sitting on my fingertip. Uh, you can also see uh, yeah, the proboscis of this particular butterfly, the proboscis of the butterfly touching uh, the surface of my uh, skin. So here it sips the sweat. I told butterflies also get attracted to human sweat because of the presence of sodium. Uh, that's the reason why they get attracted. You can see this butterfly sitting on my fingertip and also sipping liquid from the uh, skin surface here. The proboscis touching here. Going on to the next slide, this butterfly is banded royal. Uh, this was a uh, wonderful record at the butterfly park. Uh, uh, we could, uh, about uh, six years back, we had uh, seen a dead specimen of this butterfly uh, in the butterfly park. And after a long uh, wait, it has been sighted again. And the banded royal or the Chana Jalindra is a wonderful, butterfly, wonderful species belong to the Lysinidae family. This is yam fly. And then you have, this is also an interesting butterfly, the silver state acacia blue taken from the butterfly park. This is a common line blue. This is a fluffy tip. It's a beautiful uh, butterfly recorded by Pradeep Nayak. Uh, you can see how beautiful the tail is, how beautiful the butterfly is. It is mud puddling. I'm a beautiful butterfly. I come in here. I'm Judy here. I'm just uh, moving the slides. You can see the blue nawab. Blue nawab up here. Yeah. And here the common nawab uh, is uh, sipping liquid from a dead frog. Uh, the frog had died. Uh, there is a roadkill. Uh, this was like so much of a wildlife century. We saw this. You can see the butterfly is sipping the liquid uh, from the dead uh, frog. So butterflies also get attracted to uh, dead, uh, you know, uh, dead frogs or any dead organisms can attract butterflies. Mostly they take uh, also sodium from these dead animals. And you can see uh, the Tani Raja sitting on the ground here. Another interesting species, the red spot dupe. You can see the red spots. That's how they get their name, the red spot dupe. The female of the red spot dupe. They have this uh, diffused side of the wing. This is a body bear on female on the foot as an autumn leaf. This is the autumn leaf female again, and you can see the male here has got these white patches. Please, cruiser. This picture was taken at Marla. It's also a beautiful butterfly. This is blue admi admitter. This is one more. Leaves you butterfly born in the Western Ghats. Here is the southern duffer. So this is the last part. Uh, then I'm going to close this uh, session. And uh, you can see, uh, uh, I told you already uh, why butterflies are important in nature, that they form a part of the food web. Let us see some predators uh, feasting on them. This is a crass spider, which has caught the common Jezebel. The crab spiders normally they sit near the flowers or on the flower because they know that the butterfly 
would come there for nectaring. And you can see how uh, the frog here also has have caught the mud puddling common jay butterfly. There's one more crab spider with a great fly catch. There's a jane tooth spider and there's a red helen. Red helen is also a huge butterfly, uh, which has been caught in the web of the jane tooth spider. Spiders feed on the butterflies. Uh, this is a caterpillar of the southern bird wing, which has been uh, you know, infected by the parasitic vas. And these vas have, or the caterpillar, uh, the vas larva have eaten the flesh of this caterpillar and the the cocoon, you can see the uh, cocoon from this, the vas will come out. Uh, the caterpillar is going to die a painful death. Here is something interesting because uh, this was recorded almost uh, about five years back, uh, where the spider was feeding on the eggs of the butterfly called Tony Costa. So normally these spiders are known to feed on moving objects, but this is something new. Uh, and here you can see this being uh, the spider being feeding on the eggs of the tawny costa and very interesting record. So uh, we end the session uh, with the photo uh, and uh, if you have any questions you can please ask me now. Wonderful, uh, wonderful Samilin. So it was very informative and uh, I'm sure a lot of them must have, uh, you know, got a lot of information. Even on uh, YouTube, we get to see people commenting about uh, informative session and all that. Uh, so I'll, I'll uh, before getting into uh, the questions from the audience, I have uh, uh, one uh, question. So what it takes, like what, because you, you mentioned from the zoology class, you took some inspiration and started reading more about butterflies. Then you went on to a level of setting up a butterfly park and then a film also on that. So maybe we can un, uh, stop this screen sharing and then we can have your face and then we can uh, you know move on from there. One second, I'll just put you onto the uh, speaker view. So then we can have you in there this one, yeah. So what motivated you to do get into this you know a little bit more detailed way you can explain it'd be useful for people also to understand and visit your park in fact we had an opportunity to come down and see a few years back uh, uh, with family and all that yeah so it was uh, it was in uh, uh, 2009 i think uh, i was allotted a uh, uh, 2009 okay uh, 2006 uh, in that uh, way uh, um, 2009 we started, I came back from my work actually and um, 2011 we started this conservation work. Even uh, before starting the conservation work, after an inspiration uh, from the book of Indian butterflies by the butterfly man of India, Isaac Kemker, before that, um, uh, I, when I was doing my BSc at Alos College, I was allotted a, pro a project on study of local butterflies and uh, by my uh, zoology professor Ashok sir. I think he's also in this meeting. Um, I can see, uh, see his name, Dr. Ashoka CH. So uh, that, uh, that ignited my interest uh, with butterflies and I started documenting the butterflies in my village called uh, that is Belvai. And we recorded about 30, uh, 35 species of butterflies during that time. And after that, um, uh, I, it was, I know I had um, almost like stopped watching the butterflies for a while. Uh, I was uh, into work and um, then uh, again, uh, uh, we had a wild patch of uh, Clerodendron viscose, it's a flowering plant. A lot of you know, butterflies used to visit that wild patch uh, where I started photo documenting them. Uh, that was in 2009 and all. So then 2011, uh, 2010, I bought a book on Indian butterflies and I read about butterfly conservation uh, and I started this work in 2011. Since then onwards, we've been working continuously on uh, but, uh, you know, butterfly conservation and also uh, inspiring more people uh, to love and protect uh, butterflies in nature. Uh, that's the main motto. Uh, every uh, year from June to November, uh, a lot of awareness uh, programs have been conducted, daily sessions are being conducted and this is how it is working now. 
I'm sure you you inspired a lot more uh, even in the other side of the coast. Uh, you have a session even with Sharan also later in the day, uh, who's in the Rajapaliam uh, side of Tamil Nadu. So it is wonderful. So I I'm, I'm open to uh, questions. A lot of them saying it is a wonderful uh, presentation and all that in the comments. Uh, one Sanjay uh, he was asking where butterflies present during the Jurassic period. Is butterfly a long existing? Yeah, uh, the butterfly fossil date, dates back uh, more than 200 million years and uh, they shared the food with the early dinosaurs. Uh, even before the flowers evolved, you know, there were butterflies and uh, the presence of their antenna is uh, actually kind of a mysterious thing because normally uh, this um, and uh, helps them to suck nectar from the flowers. Um, so this dates back, uh, I, yeah, they were present in the Jurassic time. They shared the food with the early dinosaurs. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to open up uh, the questions to audience. Uh, if you have any other questions, maybe you can type or you can raise your hands. Uh, as you're doing it, I'm just putting the link to the, you know, the trailer of this film, uh, Life of uh, Butterflies, which is okay. 100 minutes. He said this three minutes trailer will motivate you to learn more about butterflies. It's an amazing trailer, uh, which is created by Samilin. Um, if you can also uh, share a little bit of information about uh, the film, uh, Samilin, where can we see, how do we see it? Is there a way that we get an access to uh, that film? If you can give to the audience. Yeah, uh, so actually, yeah, um, yeah uh, we, uh, we have made this uh, film, which was released uh, last year only. So uh, right now, uh, you, you can purchase the film, the whole 100 minutes documentary. It's a very informative documentary. Every nat nature enthusiast, uh, every nature lover, or um, anyone who loves nature uh, have to watch this uh, movie. And I'm uh, sure that... Butterfly yeah. uh, Pati, India would have model documentary. Yes. So this, uh, uh, and you can directly approach me if you want to watch this documentary. Uh, we have uh, we have also made a trust uh, uh, last year, which has been uh, registered, and uh, you have to make a payment to the trust account, and uh, the documentary will be sent to your address. It can also be mailed, uh, uh, which uh, mailed Im immediately to your mail address. And this documentary is copyright protected. Also, uh, the, we are trying to uh, take this online. Also, we are looking out for some platforms. Let's see that. I'll keep you updated regarding this. No, but there are more people asking, uh, you know, where to see it, how to see it. I mean, is it, they, we had to, to purchase and then, you know, right, right? So yes, yes, if yes. you can give more information on that, maybe you can put it up later, even in the WhatsApp, in the chat message. Yeah, yeah. you can uh, you can WhatsApp me directly uh, requesting for the copy of the documentary. And uh, I will send you the details on WhatsApp, how to purchase. Okay. So I can give your number oh, uh, to people who are asking. To share my number. If anybody wants, they can directly contact me. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. We can do that. If you want, to, uh, if you want me to uh, spell out my number, I can tell. Yeah, right. you can put it up in the window. You can put it in the chat window so it's easy for them. Okay. Just type it in the chat window. It's nine eight four five uh, double nine three two nine two. I'm just sharing this number. Yeah. And uh, there is one question uh, from Devi Vishnathan. As individuals, how can we contribute to save the butterflies? Uh, as individuals, uh, one first and uh, foremost thing I would request all of you is that you will have to conserve the natural forest, which is already existing in your surrounding. That's very much important to conserve the natural forest, the secondary forest especially. Anyhow, uh, the, uh, you know, the forest, uh, the reserve forests or the sanctuaries or the national parks are protected areas. But those forests which are in the pri private land, uh, they need to be protected, uh, especially if you take, uh, I, if I talk about my area, the co entire coastal belt has a lot, lot of Hopiaponga forest, but uh, unfortunately, a lot of forests have been destroyed uh, uh, for fire road or uh, uh, urbanization. Uh, so this is uh, very un unfortunate. Uh, we need to uh, 
understand and uh, know the importance of the forest. Uh, if, so by conserving forest in your area, naturally the butterfly and the other wildlife population will sustain. And then if you want to get more butterflies coming to your home gardens, then you'll have to concentrate on certain host plants, nectar plants. Uh, first, you'll have to document butterflies. You can put some nectar plants where you can document butterflies in your area. Then uh, accordingly, you can plan out the host plant because the butterflies are host specific. Every butterfly has got its own host plant to breed. So you can target on the host plant and put some plant, maybe lime plants, curry leaf, put, the, put, the, uh, put these host plants and naturally the butterfly population will sustain in the area. So this is how you can also be a part of this conservation work. Yeah, wonderful. I think Dheeraj has a question. Uh, Dheeraj, you have a mic. I can unmute you. Uh, Dheeraj? Ashok sir, I can see Ashok sir. Hi sir. Yeah. <laughs> Dheeraj, you have a question? Hello sir, Milan. Hi, hi sir, hi. Hello, how are you? I'm I, good. I want to enjoy your, all this uh, documentary and uh, because it's a uh, corona, so I covered my uh, face so that uh, I could not come on the show. Uh, yes. Visually, now I just wanted to, to you wish uh, much success in the uh, days to come and you continue to do uh, such online classes for the younger generations. It was very nice. Thank you, sir. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Thank Ashoka, sir. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask, uh, I think I'll ask, I'll read his question. Here is question. I tried taking him online. Why does the common Mormon female mimic crimson rose? Okay. That's so it's kind of a defense mechanism what butterfly uses. You call it as a, a Batesian mimicry where a palatable species will mimic the unpalatable butterfly. There are many examples on this. Uh, if you take a common mime butterfly, it mimics the blue tiger. If you take a Danadac fly female, it mimics the plain tiger. If you take a common Mormon female from Romulus, it mimics the crimson rose. So that is how uh, it is. Uh, it's a kind of defense mechanism what they use because the predators think uh, these butterflies, which are palatable to be unpalatable or toxic ones, and they just uh, don't attack these butterflies. So that's the kind of defense the butterflies use to escape threats from predators. Okay. Um, Diraj, hope you got the answer. Uh, specific to uh, one uh, Gandhi Shankar, who's from Pondicherry, who's documented the butterflies of Pondicherry. I'm just going to see if he, if, he's, if he has any question. Uh, Gandhi Shankar. Gandhi? Hi, baby. Get the glass. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So ask your questions or if you have anything to add because you 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 all know each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been following Samilian from uh, BBC onwards, BBC, Tamil Nadu, and I. The only thing which I have not done is met him in face and uh, not into the Balavi Butterfly Park. And even I planned for this year, actually, last year, I couldn't go. Maybe this year also, I think because of the corona, we will not be able to travel. It's, I have been into Mangalore for almost six months. I know Bellavi personally, uh, Belvai, Belvai personally. So it's a great work by Samilian. I know, I know each and everything he posts in the online and chat in the group. You know, I don't have much questions to ask him. And we share the platforms. And uh, thanks for uh, Ashoka sir, to bring him in the butterfly field for the love. And he has created his own park. Even I am building my own house. So uh, let me put some curry leaf plant, lemon tree plant to attract some of the butterflies. So that's it. And uh, we know each other in the online world. That's it. I don't have much question. And uh, if at all there is a question, do you have a stay facility in your park? So if I can come and stay there and document for some maybe two to three days, that is all that I'm looking for it. You're most welcome to the butterfly park. Hopefully soon. Definitely, definitely, Samuel. Thanks, thanks a lot for your... Uh, so Samilan, he was also asking about, is there any stay facility? Yeah, uh, anybody who is interested, uh, we can uh, we provide stay facility. Uh, every year we conduct butterfly walks. So the first butterfly, Belway butterfly meet was conducted uh, uh, last year, uh, September uh, 20th, uh, 21st, 22nd, a three-day butterfly meet. 
uh, first ever butterfly in meat of Karnataka, and it saw the release of Life of Butterflies, India's first documentary uh, by the Butterfly Man of India. And uh, the summer walk was also uh, near the near the streams, near the rivers. Uh, so every year we have visitors uh, also coming uh, uh, apart from these uh, meets or walks which has been conducted. Uh, for the meets, uh, we had about uh, 60 participants last year. Uh, so that way. Uh, so you can contact me directly if you are interested to visit the butterfly park, especially yeah. in the peak months like August and September. Yeah. And uh, Diraj's uh, other question is, is the butterfly park open now? If not, when will it open? So it is now, the season has just started because there were a couple of pre monsoon showers. So there's a slight activity what is seen from a couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, due, due, due to COVID-19 and as per the government order, the butterfly park remains closed. And uh, we are waiting uh, for the government orders. Uh, so once uh, we get a permission, uh, then uh, we would definitely start working uh, this season. And the season will go up till the month of November. And June to November, we remain open all days from 8 o'clock in the morning till 12.30 in the afternoon. And 8 to 11 is normally very ideal to watch butterflies in the field. Uh, rest of the off season, we remain closed. We might open uh, for a small time in, on Sundays during off season. So if you are planning to visit the butterfly park, let me know in advance. You have my number already now. And also uh, uh, another thing is that uh, you will have to visit uh, during peak months, August, September. June to November, anyhow, is the season. And I would always recommend you coming during that time. I think uh, uh, Devi Vishnadan wanted to ask something. I'll just unmute. Uh, Devi, you can go ahead. I want to say something. Yeah, go ahead. I really like the session. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, that is my daughter who uh, visited uh, your park when she was oh. four years, five years, <laughs> when she was young. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Thank so you. of course. Yeah, so we want to visit again. Sometime we'll be like waiting for. You're most welcome. Wonderful. And um, Sharon is also in the uh, session now. So I'll just ask Sharon if Sharon has uh, anything to. You can see Sharon's message. You can't wait for the next <laughs> butterfly meet. Okay. Sharon, wait <laughs> time I... the last meet. Sharon, I've just unmuted you. You can. You can. Sharon, go ahead. Sorry, I really don't have any questions because I got a call. <laughs> I joined in the, at the start and now I'm joining at the end. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward for the next uh, butterfly meet. Uh, uh, if, if there was no lockdown now, uh, I, I would have definitely visited this park uh, probably in August or September. So uh, since th there's no possibility this year, at least next year, uh, during pre-monsoon and post-monsoon, I'm, I'm trying to visit twice. So let's see. <laughs> So Sharon V uh, is also a butterfly lover. He runs this uh, group called Roar, uh, based out of Rajapalayam in the Western Ghats uh, in Tamil Nadu. So in fact, there is a talk, uh, one more talk by Samilin today itself. If somebody is missed, if four is uh, missing, Sharon is quoting it, uh, uh, hosting it. You can check that around four o'clock today. Uh, so if you have no other questions, then... <laughs> Samilan, we missed it you. It is at 6 o'clock today on oh, Butterflies six, of Karnataka. Okay, it's at 6 o'clock today, uh, the Butterflies of Karnataka. So yeah. If, are, you, if, are you able to hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. so the talk is at 6 o'clock today uh, on Butterflies of Karnataka. Okay. And over here. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So if somebody has missed a session, missed this session where he showed the life of butterflies, uh, uh, you know, though it is a little bit of... Um, uh, you know, maybe from his point of view, it is basic. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if somebody wanted to know more about it, more about the butterflies of Karnataka, they can attend the other session at 6 p.m. today. So if there are any other questions, I think, I think one question by uh, Dheeraj again, I think his voice, uh, his mic is a problem. I am from the urban place. If I want to do butterflying similar to bird watching, which areas or places are good to visit, right? So uh, if you are in urban place, I, I hope that uh, there will be some uh, cultivation there. Uh, if uh, you can visit uh, any path, any 
green patches uh, with the flowering plants or any kind of green patches you definitely see butterflies in that uh, so if if it is purely urban like you might you might not see butterflies uh, you might see it in, uh, in the area but not actually carrying out any kind of activity so you can go to some green patches or you can go to some flower gardens where you will see butterflies uh, where you have greenery a little bit of greenery you can start going and do some butterfly watching there wonderful wonderful so most of the times we we see it in parks and uh, lake beds and other places uh, okay so if we have no other questions then we can uh, move to the closure there are a lot of uh, positive notes in terms of uh, you know understanding and uh, you know learning the features learning how they behave their behaviors wh- where they feed on and things like that uh, thanks so much uh, samilan for accepting our uh, request uh, okay so there's some one last question coming in okay so we have seen some butterflies migrating from one place to another place because the lifetime of butterfly is very short how do they migrate and then why do they migrate See, butterfly migration is uh, uh, kind of a really a mystery i can say uh, if i'm talking about some local migration i see you know these autumn leaf i showed you the autumn leaf uh, pics in my uh, during my presentation and these autumn leaf butterflies every year they uh, they show up in the month of july to breed on sudarantham malabarikam we don't know exactly where they come from mostly we just have a wild guess they come from the poor western ghats and always there are tones uh, old specimens uh, you know Uh, in the field uh, where they come and start breeding uh, if you talk about long distance migrants like the common immigrants uh, mottled immigrants roses and the milkweed butterflies uh, they travel long distances uh, if you take painted lady it is universal in distribution uh, distributed uh, all over the world and uh, last year uh, we uh, had uh, seen migration of this painted lady it was first reported in uh, uh, you know uh, in uh, in arab nations uh, it it probably might have traveled all the way from africa and then in pakistan and then entered india so that's uh, really amazing to know about butterfly migration there are a lot uh, uh, need to be studied about butterfly migration uh, how, and that this uh, traveling you know the, uh, of the painted lady might take more, about the generation at least about 5 uh, to 6 generations it's not that one generation make that trip so because butterflies have a shorter life span Uh, so they take uh, two three generations or uh, more than that also to complete the migration uh, trip so they take two two generations two three generations to complete the migration trip oh that's uh, yeah. surprising and uh, that interesting to know thinking about some hot spots of butterflying uh, uh, butterflying yeah, that is hesergatta hesergatta lake Uh, area uh, valley school area jprf there are many areas in bangalore is says hesergatta is a great place where uh, this lilac silver lion was found almost after about uh, i think about after 90 or 100 years it was uh, rediscovered in hesergatta so that's a great spot for butterfly even if you take savandurga uh, there are many hot spots savandurga is a great uh, spot for uh, fi- uh, this spot sortings uh, finding of the spot sortings wonderful wonderful so uh, we'll come to the end of the session so if some people are interested in knowing more about uh, uh, samilan's work to check uh, out the film life in life of butterflies please reach out to him his number was given in the chat window you can just scroll down and then check it also uh, do plan to visit belvai sometime uh, uh, if you can you know see them the, the beauties uh, in live in action uh, when they kind of play around and then you know it's very interesting to see those butterflies in action in life so thanks so much uh, samilan uh, for accepting our request to do this presentation for us and uh, we are happy that uh, you know we could host you your first online meeting <laughs> through talam talks first online uh, you know yeah, talk here yeah yeah so uh, thank you so much again so we request uh, the participants uh, to leave uh, quickly we'll have a small uh, discussion with the samilan uh, samilan please hold yeah. i request all the participants to leave and then we'll quickly briefly talk for 5 minutes and then we'll uh, end the session yeah so i request the participants to leave uh, that's the end of the session thank you so much again uh, we have another session in the evening at 6 pm that is by samilan uh, for sharan talam talks we have another session by ramya reddy uh, that i don't know how you going to be like matching So thank you so much 
by 